The video was prepared specifically for the AK Kazian channel. Greetings, friends. Today, I would like to continue the topic of sound and circuits on logic elements, and more specifically, talk about class D amplifiers. Today, I want to focus on the operating principle of class D amplifiers, using examples of real simple circuits. If you think I missed or left out something, feel free to write about it in the comments. The distinguishing feature of class D amplifiers, compared to other types of amplifiers, is the switching mode operation of the output transistor stage. The input signal modulates a high-frequency digital signal, meaning a high-frequency digital signal is transmitted to the load, where the pulse width, or pulse density, is proportional to the input amplitude. There is a filter in the load that suppresses the high-frequency component of the signal. And in the speakers, we only hear the low-frequency sound. But let's look at an example. We'll assemble a classic class D amplifier circuit without feedback. First, we need a high-frequency square wave, on the order of hundreds of kilohertz, which will need to be integrated to obtain a triangle wave. We'll take a K155LA3 and assemble the following circuit. This is a classic square wave generator with an added integrating circuit. We get the following signal at output 1, a somewhat distorted square wave. And this is the signal at the output 2 that interests us, where we can already see a triangular signal. The shape of the signal can be adjusted using a trimmer resistor. Now we need to take a comparator, for example, the LM393, and compare the input low frequency voltage with our triangular signal. For reference, a comparator is a device that compares two analog signals at its inputs. If the signal at the non-inverting input is greater than at the inverting input, a logical one appears at the output. If it's less than a logical zero, we should get a PWM signal at the output. We connect according to the following diagram. This part of the circuit represents a filter that cuts off high frequencies. For the value shown in the diagram, the frequency response turned out as follows. It is mainly used to prevent high-frequency signals from entering and exiting the sound source. A constant offset needs to be mixed into the low-frequency signal so that the comparator works properly with single polarity power. Don't forget to pull up the comparator's output to the power supply through a resistor because the output of the LM393 has an open collector. Let's see what we got. A PWM signal with variable duty cycle is visible. A sine wave can be applied for clarity. The higher the voltage, the wider the pulse. Excellent! Now, all that's left is to feed this signal to the driver and a pair of field effect transistors. I was lucky to have RLIB 9343 and 4343 transistors on hand. However, I couldn't find the driver chip. So, we simply connect through a pair of bipolar transistors for this purpose. Field effect transistors. We load it with an LC filter, made of inductance and capacitance, and try to listen. Later on, I rewound the output inductance to increase its value and slightly lower the filter's cutoff frequency. This improved the suppression of the high frequency component in the output signal. The signal on the 8 ohm load turned out as follows. Of course, the power of such a circuit is extremely small. The power depends on the supply voltage of the output stage. In my case, it's 5 volts. By using a good driver chip for the field effect transistors and powering the entire circuit with a bipolar supply, considering the 5 volt logic power, it can be driven. This is all up to high power, 
but the principle will not change. You can also see a high level of high-frequency noise. This is all a consequence of prototyping and long wires in the output section. In a Rayall circuit, LC filters are laid out as compactly as possible. For class D amplifiers, it is necessary to select transistors with minimal internal resistance and with a margin for voltage. Also, RC snubbers are often placed in parallel with transistors in circuits to reduce spikes. Due to the pumping effect, which can cause the voltage on the transistor to rise above the permissible level, this happens because the load is sharply reactive. It's like hitting a punching bag that swings back at you and you have to dodge. You can mitigate this effect and increase power by using a bridge connection scheme where the arms work alternately, like travelers on a hand car. This was the classic Quas D amplifier circuit. Without feedback. Now, having understood it, let's look at the next circuit. I left the output stage unchanged. Let's figure out how the second circuit works in general. This stage is an amplifier for the input voltage, and a square wave generator is assembled on the comparator base. Let's take a look at the classic comparator base generator circuit. Now let's compare it with our circuit. The voltage from the amplifier's output is fed through a divider chain to the inverting input of the comparator. The overall gain of the circuit depends on the depth of the feedback. As a result, we get the following signal at the output. It is evident that with the change in amplitude, the width of the pulse burst changes. In some places, they are denser, in others, they are sparser. The feedback has different magnitudes for DC and AC voltages. The frequency response of the feedback circuit is as follows. Let's listen to how this version of the amplifier sounds. In my opinion, this version sounds more pleasant, but perhaps that's just a matter of taste. And again, just like with the previous version of the amplifier, if you want more power, you need to build a good driver, insert powerful field effect transistors, and use a high bipolar power supply. But if you're assembling a simple device powered by 5 volts, and you just need it to play, it's easier to install an amplifier chip. Class D, which already includes all of the above, or even a ready-made module, like the PAM8403 module. The sound from this module is not the best, to put it mildly. Let's take a look at the output signal. It consists of a series of pulses. Of course, it all looks very unattractive, although it sounds relatively okay. But from experience, after long listening sessions, you will start to feel pressure in your ears. In general, this can be fixed. The chip's output is implemented in a bridge configuration. To reduce the size of the board, the Chinese did not install an output filter. For the bridge configuration, it will be as follows. I used different inductors for demonstration because I simply didn't have identical ones on hand. And the following signal is obtained at the output. You can see that the high frequency pulses have disappeared. And this is how the 1 kHz sine wave looks now. Of course, the high frequency pulses haven't completely disappeared, but it's much better. Let's summarize. In a class D amplifier, the low frequency signal is converted into a sequence of pulses that control the output stage of the field effect transistors, which operate in switching mode and inject high frequency pulses of energy into a reactive load, which acts as a filter suppressing high frequencies. At the output of the filter, the amplified low frequency signal remains, which is then fed to the speakers. For low supply voltage and small power, it's better to use ready-made Class D amplifier chips, of which there are many available now. And you can choose the right option for any task. When assembling a Class D amplifier with discrete components, it's better to use specialized driver chips to control the output transistors. The transistors themselves should be selected based on minimal resistance 
and with a margin for maximum voltage. When using a half-bridge circuit, ensure the presence of an RC snubber to reduce the likelihood of output transistor failure due to overvoltage. When using cheap Class D amplifier modules with a missing or poor quality output filter, you can improve the sound by adding an additional LC filter. I hope the video was interesting and useful for you. If so, please support the video with a like. And write in the comments what you think. Thank you so much for watching the video to the end. I wish everyone good health. This was Andre with you. Bye.